Jared, welcome back. It's, what is up, Prez? It's uh, it's been a couple of weeks since we recorded our last one. Uh, we've been busy for those people that um, have been waiting and looking for the podcast. We did not forget about you. Um, glad we're back. This is episode three. Um, thankful, we're we're glad we're doing this. Thanks for all the support. Thanks for all the views. Yeah. Um, on YouTube, the streams on Spotify and uh, Apple, Apple Podcast. So. Right. Yeah. We'll uh we'll keep them coming. You know, plan is to uh to keep these semi regular, I think, kinda through through the season and then we'll we'll see what the off season That's... brings. But um no, happy to be here and, and excited to excited to, to get back For at sure. it. Yeah, no, at the last uh we had the Jamboree a couple of weeks ago, the classic Jamboree, and a couple of dads went up to me actually and said, Hey, you're that guy for the <laughs> podcast, right? And I was like I never thought I would get that, a but uh, they gave us props for it, uh, and they told us to keep doing what we do. So here we are again. We're back. We're back for more. So awesome, man. Well, yeah. Let's let's jump right in. Um, obviously, been been a couple weekends, a uh, couple busy weekends, and that that's one thing. If if you're not, if this maybe it's your your kind of early on in your your Minnesota Heat AAU basketball experience, like this is it's it's a fast paced, right? April and May, it's you're playing almost every weekend and, and sometimes traveling a lot of different weekends. And so um, missing missing a couple of weekends, there's, there's a little bit to catch up on. So take us back, um, you know, two weeks. Right. What, what, uh, what do the people need to know? So I think we're looking at a couple of weeks ago, we had um, we had the first live event, mm-hmm. uh, first live weekend, obviously. So a lot of our, our teams uh, participated in the um, Prep hoops hard work live mm-hmm. in Madison. So, so so hold on for for those that don't know the the live period the live weekend means that that only Division one schools can can be out on live period weekends can Correct. be in the gym can be recruiting and so obviously that doesn't affect ninety nine percent of players because um, most people aren't going to play in the Big Ten and and but it, they're they're really really big weekends for events because these events try and get Division one schools which will then get high level teams correct um and that's that's a large part of why we play why we love this is is going to see high level teams going to play against high level teams playing basketball at the highest level and so live period weekends are a big deal two weeks ago yeah madison was was the site of that that hard work live which was was, was a great event yeah that's a good one um it was in uh stoughton Mm -hmm. wisconsin so the sports enhancement academy we had uh, quite a few teams travel travel there i think we had 14 wow uh between uh, 15 new uh, all the way up to 17 new levels so um it was highlighted by willie vang uh heat vang 17 new they went three and one that weekend um i think they w- up until now i think they 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 win the award for most memorable play with yeah. um the the substitution <laughs> heard around the world <laughs> Iggy, Iggy, get in the game. Man. Yeah, so uh, they were down. They were playing. It was against RWA out of Illinois, I believe. Yep. RWA. So uh, it was a back and forth game, or they got down big early in the game, and then uh, in the second half, it was back and forth. Um, Heat Vang had an opportunity to win it in uh, regulation, uh, missed layup, and then in overtime, they found themselves. Um, tied mm-hmm. with like a second left inbounding the ball underneath their own hoop and um you know iggy edgy four out of iron nose sitting on the bench next thing you know willie was <laughs> screaming for him <laughs> to get in the game um a lob pass later and yeah. we have a game winner for heat bank so um heat bank finished three and one that weekend um their lone loss to south dakota attack who is um headlined by matthew morris a yeah. top 40 player in um the sophomore class so overall that was a successful weekend for them uh they weren't the only ones that had success heat west went four and that weekend as well mm-hmm. um they were down to austin kids so they were down moses I- idris and uh, agua and i wish yet they were still able to find uh success so um good weekend there uh we talked about heat spear before mm-hmm. um with Bassett from Farmington. So I know they went three and one that weekend. Heat Presby went two and two, had a couple of losses uh, by a combined two points. Hmm. Um, In the 16U uh, tower, I mean, tower clean slate uh, in Madison. Um, Heat Wiley had a pretty successful weekend as well. Three and one um, up there. Heat Grow, Mm -hmm. Heat Grow went two and two. Heat McDonald went three and one. So overall, great showing by um, Heat teams in that uh, first 
live period. Right. Yeah. So. No, that live period. I've been been really impressed. Kind of that. That's one thing, and and we hear it. It seems like every year when minnesota teams go on the road you you really hear like what a special place minnesota basketball is just it because is. like the week i mean the 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 heat the comets the furies of the world i mean select the the list goes right. on and on but i mean teams like us like who are bringing 14 pr- f- programs who are bringing 14 teams to an event like that and able to compete across the board over 500 who are playing tough teams, losing close games, winning close games. Um, I mean, that it just really, really speaks to the quality of hoops we have here in the Twin Cities and outstate because, you know, a lot of states that there's – a little bit of dysfunction, a little, just, it's, you just don't right. find that consistency across the board. And so I, it's something I think we can tend to take for granted when we end up beating up on each other every weekend, but it's good to get out get out of the state a little bit and kind of see what we got. I think there's this trend starting to happen when you start going to all these uh, national events, um, Minnesota teams often find yeah. success. I mean, uh, taking it back a couple of years, uh, in recent years, I mean, Fury, has, they've always done well in Vegas yeah. with the Comets. Uh-huh. And, um, the Minnesota Heat teams have always made rounds. I know Heat Nelson did. Yeah. And like Heat McDonald. So Heat, Heat Henderson from last year. So, yeah, no, we are definitely lucky here in Minnesota given the, uh, the landscape mm-hmm. of the grassroots um, hoops here. I think we have plenty of great coaches. Uh, the talent level is... Um, stacked, yeah. Uh, especially in this 2020 level. So yeah, no, no, no. I think Minnesota is in great shape, um, and I think the Minnesota Heat have done a great job and yeah, um, contributing to that. So so, but b- before we forget that that live period weekend locally, Future Stars Classic. Future I know Stars he, Classic. He, heat represented well with with some of the younger ages there. Yeah. So that's um, the Future Stars Classic is more for um, like the middle school. Yep. Uh, kids so that's another prep hoops ran event um in the eighth grade division we had heat pratt mm-hmm. um our eighth grade team 14 u um fared well i think they it was five and one uh, four and one uh, yeah. their lone loss being um in the championship game so yeah. i know um found plenty of success of success i think that was that might have been their first tournament so for a first tournament to yeah. finish second in you know, loaded field. Right. That's really impressive. And I know one of their players got uh, some love on um, prep hoops, Jack Miskin out of White Bear Lake. Mm-hmm. Um, terrific motor. You know, he, he's a guy that, um, you know, in talking to Coach Pratt, he hypes him up for, for like the energy that he brings to the table yeah. uh, and how that's made such a big difference to the team. So um, big props, big, big props to Jack yeah. uh, as well as Heat Pratt for uh, making the deep run yeah. um, in Future Star. So. No, I lo- love Coach Pratt and what he brings to the table. Obviously a fantastic Mayak player himself. Yeah. Jumped yeah. right into the coaching world and, and has – is already building his his coaching resume pretty impressively. What he, he's also kind of bringing bringing a unique fold into Minnesota Heat as well. Yep. So we actually just uh, we're gonna we, we just rolled this out actually uh, recently. So uh, Josh Pratt is gonna be our in home uh, Minnesota Heat trainer now. So um, starting last week we mm-hmm. we started offering training programs and Josh Pratt is gonna be the one leading that up. So uh, if you go on our website Minnesota Heat dot net under the trainings page you will see josh pratt's um training uh program there and yeah. uh, his schedules uh what's available and whatnot you can make uh, appointments that way but no josh pratt uh has a very good background uh in coaching and playing as well as training i know he's worked with um he's currently working with uh, a few Mayak players as far as training them um a few of our high high-end uh players in the 17 year level working with them tate yeah. nelson um just to name one so um yeah check him out uh on our trainings page uh read his bio uh just to read it uh just to see his credentials but um yeah josh pratt a uh, full-time heat trainer so big time for oh. sure for sure we're excited we're excited to yeah have so, so so jumping ahead then uh, to, to this past weekend what, what i would consider you know the the biggest weekend in the Minnesota Heat calendar yes. is is the Magvang invite and it, it, every year it gets bigger it gets more competitive it um I mean it's it's a really really impressive field year after year and um kind of becoming the the same way that the Comets Comets is kind of the opener and then you know I'm always I always know first weekend of May is is Meg Vang. So right. what, uh, t- take us through it. Kind of, kind of go, 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 actually, let's go back leading up to it. What is that like for you leading up to executing a tournament like that? Oh man. Like it, in all honesty, it starts like a couple of weeks before just, mm. um, compiling the team list from all the programs. And it's not just 
the local teams. It's not just the local programs. We have programs coming from Iowa, coming from Wisconsin to have multiple teams yeah. in the teens coming into town. So it's um, ensuring that we have all the appropriate teams in the appropriate divisions, mm -hmm. um, giving them competitive games. So um, this year we were at 420 again. So we, we top um, the 400 team mark for a third year in a row. So yeah. we're, we're very blessed. We're, we're, we're thankful to have all the support that we have in the basketball community. So um, six total gyms, 34 mm. total courts, and wow. about 670 games. So it's a lot of uh, a lot of planning that went into it. Yeah. Um, big thanks, big shout out to our site supervisors that made sure that our sites were uh, running smoothly. Right. Uh, Willie and I were held up at um, the Pentagon last mm -hmm. weekend our teams were playing there so we couldn't be as hands-on with the tournament so our site supervisors did a wonderful job in yeah. executing the day of mm -hmm. the event so um yeah no I, like i said uh, a lot of the work you know the thing that i think people need to realize or we want people to realize is that 75 percent of the work done uh, for a tournament takes place like yeah. leading up to it. It's once you, once that first game tips off, it's, it's a big <laughs> sigh of relief. Like we just want that first game to tip off. Yeah. Yeah. Cause from there it's, it's just, you know, teams are going to show up. It's hoops. Like, yeah, right. It's, yeah. It, people just play basketball. And, right. um, you know, the best thing about it is, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of the compliments we received this weekend is just how smooth it went. And like I said, that all goes back to mm -hmm. our staff, right? Um, our game day staff. So, um, yeah, it's this was our 10th year. Huh. Uh, it's crazy looking back on it when it was, you know, barely touched 100 to now it's a 420 team event. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's fun. It, it, it's a fun event. We always look forward to it. Well, it is. It is too a testament. Like you mentioned, the the staff and the site supervisors, but it's also the clock workers. It's the right. admissions yeah, workers. Yeah, it's for sure. Concessions. It's it, and it, it it's a testament to how many people are touched by Minnesota Heat as an organization, and and it's all networks. It's right. all like you you staff those tournaments with people you know, with, with right. people who, you know, have either wore Minnesota Heat on their chest who. Maybe they're currently, you know, and, and that's where it's really, really cool to see, especially on a weekend when you and Willie are coaching, to see, like, well, how many people can step up and how many right. people are involved. And, like, it's like that uh, the, the iceberg cliche where, like, yeah, you guys may be, like, front and center for this stuff, but underneath the surface, there's so many people that make exactly. stuff like this happen. So Exactly. That's, um, and that's, you know, that's not to mention the work that uh, Kelly did, mm -hmm. uh, you know, preparing, like, all the materials that needed to go to each site. And, um, yeah, like you said, the clock workers being there. And um, I think it's a testament to um, – the connections Willie right. has made because, um, you know, a lot of those, like who's going to want to put in a 20 hour weekend for a random guy. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. People are willing to do that because it's for Willie Vang. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, uh, big thanks to everyone that made this week, this past weekend, a success. And, yeah. um, you know, we, we hope for, for bigger sure. and better things in the future. So. so what about, what about on the court last weekend? Yeah. Both, both, Sanford, both Meg Vang. Sure. Uh, what, what were the highlights? Well, why don't we start with Meg Vang? So, uh, in Meg Vang, seventh grade. I know we talked about this team earlier, but uh, Heat Malone took seventh grade D two. Yeah. Um, the championship. So, um, I know they they had success in the Comets. Um, they had success in prep, uh, in the Future Stars Classic too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they they brought it home this weekend, Meg Vang. Um, so that team has uh, will uh will to shutter who plays for a tower his younger brother plays on that team so yeah. that's that's the alliance connection good, good there. lineage of course yeah <laughs> i think uh we're gonna have a, a to shatter leading the program for quite some time <laughs> which we're excited about we're excited about um so yeah in the seventh grade they they took it home there um you know heat pratt i think they went uh two and one last weekend too it's a pretty big wins um 17 u we had heat west i know we talked about their first live period um, in Madison being 4-0. and This, uh, in Meg Bang, they were 3-2. and two. Uh, They lost to all Iowa attack and pool play, but then they made it all the way to the championship game um, against the Matrix, lost them by 14. Yeah. So um, still found success. Uh, that we, we all know how good that Matrix team is. Um, Heat West actually checked in in the top 10 this week of mm. the seven, uh, Prep Hoops rankings. Yeah, so I've, been, I've been so impressed with they've them been, this uh, They've been, yeah, 
they they've been on a hot streak here and they they've been playing real well together so shout out to coach uh, jc as well as coach lamumba uh in the 16 u heat wiley is hitting on all cylinders i think they made the final four of the meg vang mm. um so a game short of making the the championship so um you know overall like i i know in 17 u or heat nelson in the the last couple of years brought it home in 16 u and 17 u we couldn't keep it yeah home this year but i i think um uh, we still had good showings uh in the upper division right um from our team so um shifting gears to uh the pentagon uh-huh. uh 17 u heat van went three and two uh lost to fury lost to osa adidas by one hmm. um another buzzer beater uh this time they were on a short end but yeah. um i think they'll you know it's they played them tough um heat presby was uh came out winless but uh, a lot of the games were were competitive it came down to a couple of possessions late in the game in the 16 you i mean heat tower mm-hmm. uh another clean slate yeah uh and then heat mcdonald went three and one nice so if, if you look at uh again uh if you look at our teams competing at the high level um we're right there you know we're it, it, we're we're not a game where programs can look at and think that okay this is going to be an easy win it's always going to be it's always going to be a tough one yeah whenever you face a heat team so certainly um, that was good to see right so now i mean it's it's may 9th today maybe you know he- heading heading into mid-may and um you know for for classic programs where it's yeah. kind of the, the the midway hump is is you know even even gone for some programs i'd be curious um Looking forward, like what, what what do we got on the slate coming up? How does the rest of May look? I mean, still sure. for sure, like a, a busy couple of weekends up ahead. Like what do you got your eye on? So um, this weekend is Pentagon weekend number two, which will be in Omaha. Um, uh, heat McDonald, Heat Tower, Heat Presby, Heat Van, and then we have Heat Ankara, who's playing in the SPBL, are, are all going down to Omaha. We also have um, Battle of the Lakes. Battle? We have 15... 15 out of 500 teams in that event. So hmm. uh, a lot of high-level games, a um, lot of uh, good competition that our teams will play. Yeah. Um, we have the Magic Invitationals this weekend as well, so some of our teams are playing in that. Um, this weekend seems to be a busy weekend. I hmm. think uh, a lot of te- uh, most of our teams are playing. Yeah. Um, next weekend is Fury Shootout. Have a few teams there, and then St. Louis uh, over more m- Memorial Day weekend, and then um, State in a, in a few weeks. So yeah. um, a lot of our high-end – or High, higher level teams uh, will play up until that state tournament, which is first weekend in June, and then take the rest of June off. Yeah. Um, for our lower level teams, like our uh, three, four, five, six, a lot of them are. This is like their halfway point this weekend, and then they're going to end in June. So, yeah. Yeah. It, it, the the AAU season is flying by, man. Mm-hmm. It's it's crazy to think about that. It was just a couple weeks ago we were talking about team formation mm-hmm. and players to look for, and now we're. <laughs> We're literally talking. We're, we're we're talking about the the, the end or the approach. Yeah. The approach. Uh, we're approaching the end. So, um, as they say, man, when you're having fun, time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> so this has definitely been a fun season. I think um, we're excited to see how some of the classic teams will finish mm-hmm. and how some of the you know higher level teams will progress uh, into July. So for sure, no, it's spot on. It is a um, this is my first year in in eight years not coaching. Do you have and the itch yet? I do. I do. I, I mean, I'm I'm excited to get in the gym this weekend and, and be around a lot of a lot of the stuff. But it's it's interesting how just the the timing of it all changes and where like you're in you know you're going two practices a week and it seems every weekend you're you're in the gym you're on the sidelines you're either traveling somewhere and so like this year it seems like um, how much faster yeah. I, I think like I think it's it's just like what. It seems like you guys just started, but I am not going to practice every week. I'm not going to games right. every week. And so, like, that's where, you know, I'm, I'm, I still follow pretty closely, but not being in the weeds of that stuff. Like, I mean, it's, it is, there's nothing like it. I, I cannot speak highly enough, especially in those upper, upper level when you're able to get on the road a little bit more. Um, it's quite the experience in April and May. It just, um, you know, how much better as an athlete, how much better as a player you get sure. in, in that shorter period of time and, and the relationships and, and all that stuff. It, it is a ton of fun, a really, really fun stretch. And then, June, you kind of reset. Summer's here, and then in July, it picks right back up again with with as much kind of chaos and craziness and, and a ton, a ton, a ton of fun. I think as much as teams have played uh, already, like in April, Comets and the other events, I think May is really when things start to pick up yeah. for 
upper level teams because i mean what are you going to get out of the first two tournaments right like teams are still trying to figure each other out mm -hmm. and, uh, figure out that the system they're playing and figuring out their coach and may is really when y you see teams start to mesh start to gel gel together and play together um so uh, i think we we're in for some exciting uh brand of hoops uh, in the next few weeks, so I'm excited to see how Heat teams fare. Yeah, uh, in the coming weeks, I think I think uh, we're 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 gonna be in for some good results. It is so. the home stretch leading up to state. I cannot wait. Yeah, me neither. So um, yeah, I, I think uh, that that about wraps it up. Um, please check out the you know if your son uh, or if you as a player watching this, if you're interested in um, expanding your game, uh, learning more. Um, on what it takes to become a high level player check out the training page for coach josh pratt use him use him as a resource uh, like i said he does a wonderful job um when it comes to talent uh, skill development uh, he, he was a part of the hamlin staff last year he helps out with the saint anthony hoops uh, high school team and he's been a, a he was a decorated player in high school and in college so mm -hmm. uh, he definitely comes uh with with good background good knowledge so check him out minnesotaheat.net training page so Let's do it. Signing off, Jared Nelson, Josh, Josh Presbytero, Matt Gallagher. Yeah, we're at home. Hey, everybody, check us out on iTunes. Check us out on Spotify. And definitely watch us on YouTube. And thanks for watching. To find out more about the Minnesota Heat, go to minnesotaheat.net. There you will find all about our boys and girls teams, practice locations, team camps, and your chance to buy your Heat apparel. That is minnesotaheat.net. Help support the Minnesota Heat and the Heat cast. Go to anchor.fm slash mnheat slash support 